Hi everyone. I have just received these beautiful raw spring salmon skins from a fish processing uh, plant. Would have otherwise gone to waste. Um, I just received 20, uh, 22 of them and one sockeye salmon skin and I I'm so in love with these. I don't know if you can see the pattern and the beautiful spots. I think you can. Um, I'm gonna scrape them right now and then put some in a bark tan solution and some in an oil tan solution and make some fish skin leather in two ways and see what we get. These ones are a lot thicker than the sockeye. Oh, here's the sockeye salmon. So there's a little one and here is a big spring salmon. And they are both beautiful, but it's kind of rare that I get spring salmon. Um, they only come along once in a while. They're a lot thicker and a lot bigger. And uh, they have these beautiful um, dark, dark spots. So I'm going to see how they turn out after being tanned. And let me see if I can angle this down so you can see. All right, I think you can see there. So this is my favorite scraping tool. It's a, a piece of rock. Um, I don't know what kind of rock. It's slate-like, could be slate. Um, yeah, I'm not totally sure, but it's got this really nice, smooth, rounded edge. And it kind of fits perfectly in my hand like that. And see how easy it is. So these are fresh. They were just skinned yesterday at the fish processing plant. This works really well, actually. And you can kind of see all the obvious flesh that's coming off. But if you look at the under layer of that, below that flesh, you can see sort of this um, really thin black and gray, different gradients. And out to the edges there's a little bit of white and all of that needs to come off too so i can use quite a bit of force with my scraping as you can see it's a good workout after a while i start to break a sweat of the flesh that comes off easily. I'm going to move it around this way and start from the tail. So I usually start from one end and work outwards. And then I'll go back and do a once over. Oh, you can see here all of these kind of stringy bits, the tendons. Um, I think they're tendons. And those have to come off. If you leave any meat on, then that can rot and make the, uh, the fish smell really stay with the skin. And the other thing is, if you leave too much of the, the fibers uh, underneath the, on the flesh side, it can actually impede the, uh, the tannins from soaking into the, all the layers of the flesh. This one is a little trickier. So I'm not too sure if this is, um, is true or not, but I've heard that it might be easier to freeze them first and then scrape them. So I'm going to try that with some of the other ones because this is a fair bit more work. And there's quite a bit of flesh on this. These were actually, um, they, these were actually fleshed in a, or sorry, these were skinned in a skinning machine. So they're fed through and then just sliced. I didn't actually get to see the machine, but uh, it's a big, heavy duty industrial machine. That's why these are so perfect. But I did receive some with big gashes and tears in them, so it doesn't work perfectly, but it works pretty well. Okay, now I'm gonna work on the middle part. Oh, let's get that off. So I made the mistake of scraping on my counter and uh, there's a few scratches on it. So I won't do that again. Lesson learned. Not 
really sure why I thought it wouldn't scrape, but I think I was pretty eager just to get the scraping done. So you can see how easily that comes off, and now there's all these little white bits that I want to get off too. And you can go in different directions. you've worked it really really well and it's still not coming off then uh, just do your best it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect but it does tend to help in, with, the, with the final product if you do a really good job of scraping so there is some still some uh, some of this black stuff to be scraped off and some of the more, the white parts over here are a little bit harder to scrape off. I'm going to pretend I've scraped it all and look at the scale side and see if there are any scales to scrape off too. So with spring salmon, the scales are generally harder to scrape off. They seem to kind of be really nested under the outer skin of the salmon. So let's see. And so you just want to go very gently against the grain of the scales. And if you go too hard, this is even starting to um, tear a little bit. So, And then you kind of get a disruption in the beautiful pattern of your fish. So, And usually along the midline here of the side of the fish, that's where the scales tend to be little more stubborn and you want to just work them gently out and if you don't get them out they'll eventually fall out after the tanning process probably when you're softening and then you just get fish scales all over your floor which is okay if you're working outside but they'll eventually release and I'm not too sure about this either but I have a feeling that if you leave the scales in it might possibly interfere with some of the uptake of the tanning solution into the fibers, the different layers of the fish skin. So I think it's better to remove them if you can, and if they're really stuck in there and you're going to sacrifice the beautiful pattern of the fish, then to leave them in. So going against the scales, but I'm also going to work outwards too. I'm going to work my way around and just see what comes out. There are some scales coming out, but not a lot. I can't wait to see how this looks as an oil tanned piece of fish leather. I haven't oil tanned any spring salmon, only sockeye, and that looks absolutely gorgeous. So I'll show you in contrast the sockeye salmon skin. You can see, hopefully you can see the beautiful shimmery silver. And I'll work those scales and see what happens. Yeah, these ones, there's more scales that come out. They're smaller and thinner and they, they release a lot easier. So I generally scrape the flesh first. And that's because if there are, if I'm doing this more delicate work of removing the scales and there's lots of um, ripples underneath, then I might, then my scraper might catch on them and then, um, and then uh, make a mark on the skin side, which is what I don't want. But since these have been done by a skinning machine, they're quite uniform. So it's a flat surface, a flat plane. If you can see, see all those scales that came off there. They're coming off quite easily. So I'm working tail to neck. There was this one lonely piece of sockeye salmon skin in the bag of spring salmon and so I wanted just to scrape it and put it in the 
tanning solution along with the springs, but it'll probably take less time. I think because of the, the thickness, the difference in thicknesses, it'll take about half the time in a bark tan solution to do the sockeye salmon skin than uh, the spring salmon. Look at all those scales, there's way more on the sockeye. And I'm not um, going too crazy with this with the scaling, but just getting off the scales that are coming off a little more readily. come off easier so in the next steps of the process some of some more of them might release that are stuck in there but I think I've got most of them out so now I'm gonna go the opposite and uh, scrape this one and it's probably gonna be easier than the spring so maybe I can do this one until it's clean to show you a good example right here aren't coming off so well even though I'm scraping there, but, oh. when you kind of spot scrape one concentrated area sometimes you can get a little bit cleaner so that worked a little bit but still not perfect but it's good enough for tanning I'm scraping I like to in my mind just think about the journey of the salmon how they smell their way home and how hard they have to fight to get home to spawn and, uh, I'm really thankful that I have these salmon skins to make beautiful leather out of or else it would just go to waste. Sometimes I get these with the, the dorsal fin on still tan them with the dorsal fin on and it seems to work. It's kind of a neat little uh, feature on a piece of leather if it still has one of the fins on it. This one is almost done. It's, it's almost completely scraped, just a tiny bit more in the middle. So if you don't have a rock like this, you can use um, a worn down shell. I use an oyster shell as well. The important thing is that you have a bit of a smooth edge. You don't want it to be serrated or jagged or else you're gonna tear it in your fish skin. And it's better to have a longer flat surface. If I only had a surface like this, it's smooth enough, but then I can only work a small amount. And then you kind of have to overlap your last scrape. So, so this tip is really good for um, isolated spots, but not so good for removing much of the flesh. So this is a perfect tool, really. Okay. And you can see these fibers here. There's a lot of them 
and they're almost endless but don't worry too much about those because you can it can drive you crazy and you can keep scraping and scraping and scraping and they seem to never end and uh, but they do actually take away from a little bit of the integrity of the, the fish skin after a while anyways, so if you take away too much I think this one is done so there's little bits on here but no real chunks of flesh this one's off. most of the black stuff is gone there's just tiny little traces of it and so after this I'm gonna rinse it in some cold water you know you don't want to ever use heat on these while they're raw because they are cold water fish and hot water will cook them and we don't want to cook these we want to keep them raw so I'm gonna rinse this and then I'm probably going to put this one in a bark uh, hmm Maybe an oil tan solution because it's in really good shape except for this one little scar here it's a beautiful side so if I put it in oil tan solution then the colors I'll really be able to see the colors of the natural color of the fish um, so yeah that's gonna go into a tanning solution either bark or oil for um, a day or uh, for for oil or for um, bark tan I would do that for a week and then rinse it out, re-oil it, and soften it. So you'll see that in part two. Thanks for watching.